December the 29th, 2020. Guys, you're looking at the National Weather Service uh, map, and there's, we've got a winter storm that's brewing. This one's going to be a little larger than the last one we saw, and it's going to affect the East Coast going into New Year's Eve. But uh, again, this storm is going from Canada all the way down to Mexico. And if you look into southwest Texas right now, guys, you've got winter weather, uh, um, excuse me, winter storm watches. You can see in your color code here at the bottom, winter storm watches, which are here. Then you go into winter storm warnings in the pink here, guys, and then up into the northwest. Winter, uh, you've got uh, those are warnings. You've got winter weather advisories up in several areas in the purple. You've got avalanche uh, avalanche warnings here in Colorado. Check this out. All of this is going to be moving to the east. The Great Lakes are under a gale warning. And you always have wind effect snow. Then you've got gale warnings are already set up off uh, the New England coast, off the northeast. And you can come here and check this out. So what you need to do is make sure that you're prepared. You've got high wind warnings coming uh, from Washington down into California, over uh, into Nebraska, those areas. through. So you, it's going to be a wind event mixed with some very cold and wet air. And so you you need to prepare for that. We've talked about this winter possibly being one of the worst in a long time. Now, it started out mild, but what we're seeing is with some of these Arctic vortex dip uh, dips is extreme weather. Remember, just a week or so ago, we got record snowfall in New York. They're just now trying to get some of that cleaned up, and you've got another round coming in. And so make sure you got plenty of heat. You know, you it's easy now to lose power depending on what event happens, whether it's a natural event or whatever. We've seen that, saw it in Nashville. And uh, you lose other communications too. But make sure you got plenty of heat, plenty of backup food and water. That's what you want to make sure of. That way you don't have to get out into the fray of things. And being prepared like that also keeps you out of the tsunami of events that are going to lead to you get in a car to see if you've had the cure yet. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you've got to go somewhere and you, you haven't prepared or you could, weren't able to prepare, and they're all of a sudden, well, we got to see some proof of where you've been, what you've been doing. You want to stay away from that until, the, and I mentioned this before, until enough of the events happen that are we're seeing happen worldwide that are negative events to where someone wakes up and possibly stops it. Some countries already are doing it. Africa, Australia. So you want to be prepared, uh, not just for the winter, but for that too. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, if you look at, the, let's take a look at the radar. And you can see where the moisture is. You've got coming off of the Washington coast coming in and coming up through the uh, northern tip of Texas, through Oklahoma, Kansas, northern Missouri, all the way over into Chicago. And it's quite a bit of moisture here, and you can tell there's a lot of wind in the way this thing is shaping up. And everything is going to be moving to the right. So from Pennsylvania, Detroit, Toronto, Ontario, Montreal, Boston, New York, you guys are going to be under the gun again. And you don't want to be caught on the highway traveling during a storm like this because that may be the last traveling you ever do if we see the types of snows that we saw just a week ago. So prepare. Things are changing. Don't just take it for granted that everything's going to be okay. That's not necessarily the truth uh, anymore. Um, guys, and I just want to mention this. Um, I was looking. Uh, we don't really know what's coming on the planet. We do know certain people would like to control the entire deal. And if you think back about... Um, you look at the, as far as, just say the Georgia Guidestones, a lot of people say there's nothing to it. It's way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you Not many people see it, but it's it's uh, the U.S. Uh, homes, uh, Stonehenge, guys. Everybody in the world just about knows about the Georgia Guidestones. And, uh, you know, it's what, seven languages. And one of the things they're talking about is they would like to con serve the earth's population at around 500 million and so um, if you think about that we're around 78 uh, billion people now to do that that would eliminate 95.9 percent of the population on the earth 
500 million, and if you divided it out over the countries, and the U.S. is approximately 4.3% of the Earth's population, much smaller than um, China, India, for example, um, and they did it proportionally, that would only put about, in, in other words, 4.3% of the surviving 500 million that they want to bring this down to. In other words, you're going at, uh, we're almost at uh, 9 or, or 8 billion people. So you take that and go down to 500 million, you're again taking out 95%. And if you look at it again proportionally, that would leave about 500, um, or that would leave 21 million people in the U.S. at 4.3% of the population of the 500 million. And what happens then if you look at 21 million people, that's half the population of the 40 million that we know of in California. So, if you, you know, of course, it wouldn't be just left in California, half the population. That's just for example. But that would be wiping out every person in the entire U.S. except for half of California. And you think about that. 21 million people is not that many people. Okay. So we hope that plan doesn't uh, come about. But I just thought I'd share some of the numbers with you uh, and think about it uh, again around 7.8 or so getting close to 8 billion and uh, they want 500 million do the math again 95.9 percent elimination so just uh, you got to hope and pray for the best guys it's a heads up be safe